Hello everybody and welcome back to Witch Fix. Today we're looking at a film which may or may not be a porno. Never thought I'd have to say that, but this is where we are. And at the top of the episode, I just want to say that under trigger warnings in my notes section, I just wrote yes. So if you can think of it, it's probably in this movie. And I would advise you to not watch it. And also to not listen to the episode because it will contain some discussion of various triggers uh, as we go through the plot of the movie. Chiefly among those will be um, drugging, sexual assault and violence. So just steer clear. So I ordered this film sight unseen. It is called The Witch's Sabbath and is a certificate 18. I ordered it on eBay just based on the cover because it had the word witches on it and it was only when I came to look it up on IMDb in advance of watching it this morning uh, that I realised that something was amiss and mostly this was due to the names of the people uh, on the cast, most of which read like the edgy names people made up for MySpace, but some of them have like last names which feature triple x's and also one of the characters in the movie is called craven moorhead so i began to think that something was suspicious but when i went over to amazon video because yes you can get this movie on amazon video i checked it lists it not as an erotic movie but as a horror and suspense movie and i have no reason to believe that they would lie to me i went to check on the reviews and someone referred to it as a horror comedy so fuck you paula you knew what this was and you made me watch it uh but yes this is definitely i think intended to be a porn film i will however point out that it sucks if if that was the intention it's also not a very good horror film i can kind of see it as a horror comedy that's what it closely resembled and that is what i will be reviewing it as were there tits in it yes were they relevant to the plot no but was it in any way erotic mm, no i don't think so so I'm going to call it a horror comedy and we'll see how we go from there. Now I'm not in any way shape or form saying that being in a porn movie is a bad thing. If you want to be in one, if that's how you want to make your money, go ahead, you have my blessing. What I do take issue with is when you make a porn film and then don't write on the cover that it's porn. So people will accidentally buy it when they're just looking innocently for films about witches, as I was. And uh, Amazon, you should also have a category for porn and this movie should be in it. It's the mislabeling that I have problems with because otherwise I never would have purchased this movie. But having paid literally twos of pounds for it, I now feel duty bound to review it. Fucking hold on to your hats people, we're going in. To start off with, I would rate the film quality of this as yikes. It's, uh, it, it's very blurry. It kind of looks like someone videotaped the pilot episode of Charmed, like the original Charmed. And I hate that I have to say the original Charmed. The Good Charmed, uh, and then watched it about 50,000 times on VHS, and then I watched it. It's blurry is what I'm saying. They've also added a film grain filter over some of it, I guess to suggest flashbacks. They didn't need to do. The film quality is already so bad that they don't need to make it look vintage in any way. It just has that look. And this is essentially meant to be a film from 2005? It looks like it was filmed in 1974. I was not impressed with the quality. The sound quality also is like listening to a conversation going on in a different room, which was not helped by the fact that my neighbours were blowing up a paddling pool, which they did yesterday, but then they let it down, but then they blew it up again today. So that's also partially annoyed me because it's nonsensical, but it's nothing to do with the movie. What I'm saying is I couldn't hear. Obviously there were no subtitles, and so I didn't really bother going back over it, so forgive me if I get some details of the plot incorrect. We start the movie off with a dark-haired woman who enters a creepy house and then gets Freddy Kruegered by a woman in a body stocking with big tits wearing a knife glove and uh, she then holds up this woman's head after beheading her and says, another soul for our master and then French kisses it and this is why I started to think, oh god, what am I watching? We then get some credits, pretty ballsy to put these at the opening of the film. I'm just going to say if this is a porno, why is it an hour and a half long? Who needs that amount of time? Go to a doctor. We get some credits over some film grain that they didn't need because it looks terrible. And then we meet two guys who I refer to internally as Chad and Brad, but whose actual names are Travis and Derek, which I think are even better. So I'm going to use those. Uh, they arrive at the house. Travis is very up for being at this spooky house, which I think is meant to be a mansion, but basically looks like a condo that they put scary lighting on. 
Derek is, is less sure about coming to this stranger's house for apparently a dinner party. What a weird thing to be invited to. Um, but then um, they, they turn up. A scary butler opens the door wearing kind of a gimp mask, but one that someone's been out with a pair of scissors. Uh, and he takes their invitation, which is a piece of red construction paper, uh, and invites them inside. The uh, sky, I will mention, <laughs> because let's talk about the sky for a minute. It's behind the house, as you would expect the sky to be. But it does look like someone took one of those little animated GIF thumbnail pictures, also from MySpace in the early 2000s, and then enlarged it, and then green screened it on as the sky. And at some point, I swear, the lightning started going the wrong way. It looked very weird, and I wasn't here for it. Anyway, Travis and Derek go inside. Travis is hoping to get laid at this dinner party, which seems weirdly presumptuous. Uh, it's not like it's a party party. There's going to be food. Be classy. The house inside is decorated like they were going for gothic luxe, but kind of hit at funeral parlour that needs a revamp. There's a lot of cherubs, there's a lot of, like, damask and stuff. It kind of looks like, have you ever seen Come Dine With Me? There's a special kind of, like, divorced woman in her late 50s who loves damask and black hair dye. And this is what our house would look like. That's a very specific genre of interior decor. A flash of light reveals three women standing in an alcove as the guys are ushered into the dining room. They can be seen without the light flash. Like, you can see them just standing there in the dark as well. So that's great. Derek seems kind of smart and he's like, we shouldn't drink anything they give us. This is suspicious as fuck. He's quickly overruled, I guess by his penis. The three women who were previously in the alcove then appear behind them, all in various underwear, you can kind of tell by looking at them that only one of them was paid to have her boobs out because they're already out and the others are very much clothed. But they then start shoulder rubbing the guys, except for the woman in the middle who starts just erotically rubbing a chair because she doesn't have a man to rub. That chair is going to be really relaxed. Another witch appears who is called Oriana. She is the tit witch from the opening of the film. Uh, she just sort of stands there while the others are robbing the men and also a chair. The guys are then led off as the butler arrives with one plate of dinner. Were they going to share? And he seems very put out that his guests have been taken away from him before he could serve them what looks like an empty plate. They are taken to the spooky basement from the opening of the film. I say opening of the film. This is still technically the opening of the film. We then get a witch point of view as she continues to like rub their shoulders. But from her point of view, her hands look burnt, which was mildly interesting. And if this was a regular film, I'd be kind of intrigued by that. But needless to say, it is never explained. We then get a bunch of weird close ups of rubbing and also boobs because those come out. But they're only out for a little bit before Oriana breaks out what is essentially Godzilla's arm. Uh, and starts ripping people apart with it. Uh, she bites off Travis's tongue, uh, and then he crawls across the floor towards Derek, who takes the longest amount of time to realise that his friend is, you know, crawling on the floor with no tongue. Uh, and then both of them get murdered. So there we go. But during the scene in which Derek is murdered, we see the same girl get splattered with different blood three times. Is she running out of the room to clean off and then coming back in? What's happening here? There are three girls. Two of them get splashed with blood once, but the one who is contractually obliged to have her boobs out gets splashed three times. I don't know why they thought we wouldn't notice. Maybe they knew we would and they didn't care. Anyway, Derek's dead. There is then various chanting and they hold up the heads of Travis and Derek and only one of them bursts into flames. I did not know if this was significant. Apparently not. We are then introduced to a blonde girl with a white bra, so I'm, I'm guessing she's one of the goodies. Um, her name is Eliza. We don't find that out for the longest time, but I thought I'd mention it. Uh, she is attacked by a man in a balaclava who comes through the window that's just huge and also open. This turns out to be her boyfriend, Seth. Seth needs therapy. Why would he think this was okay? Uh, but then they make up, I guess. We then get a cut to Sin N Skin, like fish and chips, uh, which is the strip club. This is definitely just someone's house, but on the side of it is a big sign that seems to have been put on some sort of construction paper, which is a painted city skyline, which is what a three-year-old would draw if you said, paint me a picture of New York from your balcony. It looks terrible. I wish they'd done a better job of that, but there we go. Uh, they're just sort of some guys queuing outside, and then inside we see 
someone who resembles Oriana but who isn't her, so that was confusing. Stripping. But she has a pair of leather pants just kind of bunched around her knees while she's doing stuff on the pole. So it kind of uncomfortably looks like she has pooped her pants, which is not sexy. There's then the funniest line in the film, and basically the thing that made me decide that it was a horror comedy, as opposed to any of the things I think it was trying to be. Because a, one of the witches approaches a guy at the bar, and he's like, oh, what's your name? And she's like, it's Roshan. And he's like, oh, that's a beautiful name. My name's Dave! That was a, just an amazing line. If I'm going to have another pillow embroidered, I really must learn how to embroider stuff. That's going on it, because that's hilarious. She then takes him to a different room, which is just hung with Christmas lights, and there's an armchair in it, like someone did the Big Brother diary room on a fucking budget. She sits him down, and he instantly goes, oh, you're driving me crazy. To which my response is, have you never sat in an armchair before? Calm down, Dave. Um, but he then reveals that he's a vice cop. Rashan don't care about, because she then uh, snaps his hand backwards. Like, not just, like, broken, but, like, literally, like, all the way around, co nearly completely off. He doesn't really react to this. He's just like, you broke my wrist, you bitch. And I'm like, that's not broken. That's decimated. But then she pulls his arm off and beats him to death with it. So I guess he didn't have a lot of time to get used to the whole wrist thing. Uh, Oriana gets pissed at her for reasons that I couldn't hear because of the paddling pool situation. But basically, I think it's because they need to do their rituals in the ritual room and the armchair room is not the ritual room. Rashan made a no-no. So there we go. They then get the blonde bouncer lady who's been giving people shit to come to the murder room and then they murder her as a sacrifice. So uh, I guess they didn't need Dave. They just got this other lady to do it. Before she dies, however, the blonde bouncer lady does make fun of Oriana's boob veins and says it's the worst boob job she's ever seen, which is very body shamey. Anyway, we're back to Eliza. She and her boyfriend are having a little discussion because he has been to a script club with his friend Damien who's called Damien and she's not happy about that and he's like well you should come with me then and then you'll see that it's a classy establishment to which my response is I've seen it and it's not uh, but they decide to go and she very nicely decides to bring a friend along for Damien because Damien apparently needs to be set up we then get this weird random flashback of a, a blonde woman holding a, a little baby girl with dark hair and I was like is, is this meant to be Eliza's mum What's happening here? Because this flashback comes out of fucking nowhere and is not remarked upon. In the meantime, Seth goes to Damien's house to catch him watching porn, which is slightly better than the porn that we are already meant to be watching. Pornception. Uh, he's also, like, got his hand on his pants and he pulls it out and just starts eating chicken wings, which is not hygienic. And if this film was meant to be erotic, it would definitely turn me off. But there we go. Dick wings. Seth responds to this with the second funny line in the film, which is porn, beer and chicken before noon. Like, I agree on the first two, but what's wrong with chicken before noon? You can have chicken before noon. Don't chicken shame people. They say that they're going to go to the strip club and agree to meet there at 8pm. Now, this is a, a little bit of personal history, but when I lived in Bristol, I lived on a street which had at least two brothels and a strip club. Um, not to mention a number of private shops. But the strip club I used to see open on my way home from my late shift at work at like 11 o'clock at night. It did not open at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. is family time, guys. Um, so this is like the world's earliest strip club, which is, I guess, not a sign of quality. We then get a kind of interim scene, which isn't really that important, except this is where Craven Moorhead makes his appearance. He's a Bible salesman and he comes to the witch house. Yeah. So he comes in. The door is just open. So he goes in is like, have you heard the good word of Jesus? I have a Bible. He continues to talk to this Bible like it's Scooby-Doo and he's shaggy. And he's like, oh, there's a weird vibe in here, Bible. It's it's very strange. He meets Oriana, who, as per usual, has her tits out. But he continues to give her his, like, Jesus pitch, looking her in the eyes. So I think he should get a bonus because he's doing his job really well. Uh, she then, however, chases him with a knife boomerang, which I guess does break his concentration. And I feel bad for M Mr. Moorhead. He gets chased around the house for a bit and then stabbed by the butler or got by the butler. Unclear. And then we cut back to what Eliza and her friends are doing, which is getting ready. Eliza's friend is a brunette called Amber and Amber is a buzzkill and not sex worker positive. So don't be like Amber. We also see how Damien acts around real women, which is terribly. Um, he, he does not seem to know how to people properly, but he is hotter than Seth. So... We then find out the Bible guy is actually still alive 
And then there's a really long scene of Oriana and the, the other witches trying to tempt him and talking about how he uses the money from his Bible sales to, to fund terrible luxury and debauched lifestyle. Unclear, because how long does it take to blow up a padding pool, people? How long? It's been hours. Uh, they talk a little bit to the Bible salesman and, and then they kill him. So he, he's he's dead. Just before he gets killed, however... There is a moment where they like cover some body parts on the floor with a sheet and then pour a potion on it and then a fog machine starts up somewhere and I thought maybe this was like the blonde bouncer lady being remade as a witch but when she stands up and the sheet comes off it's just Oriana under there but but she was the one who poured the potion on it so it feels like this is a magic trick with with no real point and isn't that impressive. The guys and girls uh, Amber and Eliza and their assorted dates for the evening appear to be sitting around a dining table in their apartment drinking from red solo cups at noon waiting until it's late enough i.e 8 p.m to go to the strip club um we just see some more of, of Damien's shockingly bad behavior uh, and then they leave for the strip club quite early now this is meant to be like the night before Halloween so I guess they're looking for like sacrifices and stuff because they seem to be killing people at quite a rate, and we'll get into that later. However, there is a guy on the door checking ID, and the cover is $20. $20 to get into someone's house, which has Christmas lights in it, where you're almost certainly going to get murdered. And if you want to lure people in to kill them, shouldn't your cover be either non-existent or, like, two bucks? Also, why do they care about ID? It's just very strange, but they pay, like, $80 to get all four of them into the strip club, and then they have to wait to get seated? I have never been to a strip club, but do you normally have to wait to get seated like you're in a pizza hut? It just didn't seem like that kind of establishment. I get it if maybe like a burlesque club or a cabaret show, but 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 not a strip club in someone's front room. Amber continues to have a terrible attitude, and to be honest, I'm kind of sick of her. The music, however, is very good. Um, I think it's like classic rock, but did they get the rights to any of that, or did no one watch the film so no one knows their music's been stolen? No idea. It's at this point that Eliza gets mentally ensnared by Roshan, who's doing some stripping. She then imagines herself as a stripper, but then we have that like weird mum flashback again, where she's being taken from her mum as a baby and like taken away by some lady with dark hair. While her mum goes, "Don't go, Eliza. Come back." Like Eliza isn't two and being carried. We also get like some of the grainy footage of the witch house implying that she was maybe taken there as a child. This is never elaborated on, but it was kind of an interesting plot point, and if this had been a good movie, I would have been quite interested by this. She does, however, remain in a trance, and is invited to meet Roshan in the parking lot after the show. So I'm guessing at, like, what, 9.30 in the evening? <laughs> this is a very early strip club. Uh, they then meet the stripper in the parking lot, and it are given a red construction paper invite to a Halloween party. So I think we can all see where this is going. Uh, Eliza agrees to go, and they're told the party is at 10 in the evening. So these witches clearly, they like things early. Roshan also talks to Oriana about Eliza, saying that she has a presence about her, so I kind of assumed that maybe she was a witch, um, but this has never gone into, never elaborated on, so. The next evening, they go to the witch house in some of the lamest Halloween costumes that you can buy for under £15 on Amazon. They're greeted by the butler, they then walk around the house being freaked out, except Eliza, who is kind of into it and feels like the house is familiar somehow. Again, never explained. Oriana then appears, shortly followed by her boobs. They are told to go and, and sit down for dinner, because apparently at this dinner party they are actually going to have dinner. And then in the next scene, Damien goes, that was delicious! While they're sitting around a coffee table, and the butler is removing a single pink plastic bowl of what looks like spaghetti. I feel like Damien needs to be shown what proper food is, because so far he's only eaten dick wings and like a child's small amount of spaghetti at a coffee table, which is weird in a mansion, but there we go. Uh, Oriana then reveals that they are witches and invites them to a pagan ceremony, which Eliza and the two guys are, are willing to do, but Amber says that it's against her religion. But somehow going to a strip club in essentially the middle of the day is not. Amber's just boring. The others then leave with the other witches, leaving Amber alone with Oriana. It turns out she's the girl from the beginning, but I didn't recognise her because she was just like a generic brunette person in the beginning and I wasn't really paying that much attention. But yeah, we see her die again. At least we see her die twice. They're all split up then with the different girls and have different things painted on their chests in blood. Uh, so a Baphomet, 
a pentacle and what looks like the flying spaghetti monster is painted on Eliza's stomach and this becomes a plot point, believe it or not. They then rejoin each other in the lounge. Uh, Damien is mad because it seems like it was a massive cock tease because he didn't get to touch any boobies and he's upset. Um, they then confront Oriana about how Amber's now missing and the helmet from her like army man costume is still there. But Oriana is like, drink from the suspicious chalice. And then they all drink from the suspicious chalice. Before drinking, um, Seth is like, whoa, this smells like wine. Like, oh no, <laughs> the weakest form of alcohol. Um, but I don't know if it's meant to be because he doesn't like wine or what, but he's just like, whoa, this smells like wine. And everyone has to assure him that it's not wine before he will drink it. I don't know what's going on with Seth. They then all get dizzy and pass out and they are transported to the creepy basement where the creepy things happen. The witches then assemble, much like the Avengers. And uh, when Damien like tries to grab Oriana's boobs, they are protected by magic that repels him because they are being magically held in this pentacle circle thing by a wibbly wobbly camera effect. Uh, Oriana then reveals that they are black witches who worship the Dark Lord, who is not the devil because the devil is a name made up for him by superstitious idiots. I can kind of get on board with that. But she says that they are immortal so long as they sacrifice people to him every year and they have to sacrifice 666 people by Halloween. 606 people a year? That's a lot. That's a big commitment. So you've got to kill 666 people a year and they seem to be doing this entirely by patrons to the strip club and people who come to their Halloween party. Which you think people would start to avoid after year one. You know, after all of the people disappear. Uh, Damien escapes the circle when a candle falls over and wax covers part of the pentacle enabling him to leave. The film of that happening is then played backwards so the candle like schlorps itself back together and stands up. Um, after he's left the circle he gets his eyes poked out and uh, is then murdered. So bye Damien, we hardly knew ye. An earthquake then signals that the Dark Lord is arriving and Oriana says that he is displeased. I don't know why, it's unclear how many people they have killed cumulatively by this point. Obviously they haven't killed like 600 plus people in this film but I assume they have been killing beforehand. But there we go. The candle falls again, by which I mean they play the same bit of footage again, and this time Seth gets out before the candle slops itself back together and stands up. He then kills two of the witches, one of whom bleeds green, which is kind of cool, and uh, is then subdued. The butler is then possessed and starts speaking as if he is the Dark Lord, and then a giant wiggle monster busts through the wall. Uh, this is the spaghetti monster from the abdomen of Eliza. Uh, it's basically like a giant wiggly green lit frog face through a hole in the wall with a lot of these like wiggly tentacles that like come out. It looks kind of dumb. It kind of reminds me of Hell Comes to Frogtown, which if you've ever seen it, don't see it again. What is wrong with you? Uh, the Wiggle Monster then kills Rashan. By Rashan, we hardly knew you. Uh, Oriana then attacks Seth, but is also wiggled by the Wiggle Monster. It's unclear if this also kills Seth, but... He is not in any of the following scenes, so I guess he's dead. Wine or no wine. Eliza then like cowers into a corner and we get a flashback of Rashan saying that she's special and that she will be the final sacrifice and there is a presence about her. And then we cut to the strip club, which desperately needs a renovation. But she's then on stage in the club uh, dancing and then invites them all to her Halloween party uh, via her butler who will pass out the invitations outside. So it's pretty clear that she has taken on Oriana's role as leader of the witches who are now all dead. So I guess she's working solo. Uh, I think it would have been better if Seth had been the new butler. I think then it would have been sort of like everyone is gone, everyone is defeated and then it's just her and Seth have like taken over that role. It's never really classed, like never really explained if she is actually a witch or not. I guess the film doesn't care enough. Okay, the paddling pool is full. Here come the screams. <sighs> uh, so obviously this was not, let's say, a serious movie, which I think is kind of a shame because it does have a reasonably better strung together plot than some of the other films that I've looked at. Like, it kind of reminded me of Hellraiser 3, which is many things. A good movie is not really one of them, but it's not a porno movie. Uh, but that one also features sacrifices being lured into a strip club, so I thought I'd mention it. Um, so there's definitely precedent for this kind of idea working as a story. Um, I feel like if you removed the kind of awkward attempts 
at porn scenes from it, it would be a reasonable attempt at just a low-budget horror film. Uh, the gore and special effects and stuff was actually pretty good. Um, it wasn't as bad as I've seen it, mostly because they kind of use like practical effects and don't try and use shitty CGI. Except for the sky, which I will never forget. It was terrible. Um, but it kind of reminded me of the end of Cherry Tree, where like the innocent who's been pursued through the whole film becomes the, the witch and kind of takes on that mantle. So there are elements to the story that, that do kind of work and that were would have been enjoyable in a different film. Uh, but this one uh, was... Um, it didn't really succeed at any of the genres it was trying to be, is what I'm saying. And uh, I feel like if it had just stuck with one of those genres, it maybe would have would have done better at keeping itself together and kind of on message. It kind of files out a little bit and doesn't really know what it's doing. I have no problem with it. Generally, if, if all it's trying to be is just a silly porn movie with like a, an attempt at a story, but I feel like it's not really marketed as that. Like the copy that I have does not seem to mention anything to do with that. It's definitely marketed as a horror film. I kind of wish it hadn't been. Uh, but yeah, aside from the fact that it should be in a different category altogether, I can definitely say it had witches in it, uh, but that I would not recommend watching it unless you're feeling silly and are very drunk and want to watch it with some friends for funsies. I'm going to go off and, you know, watch something that I was actually meant to review <laughs> and uh, I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one.